What did you just say? I'll grab the rest of my things on my day off. Marianne, where are you going? Marianne! Hi, I'm Talita Maia and I'm coming to you live from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm the next guest on Rob's Inner Circle. Don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. We will be right back with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Robert D'Alessio, and I am the host of Rob's Inner Circle Broadcasting Worldwide. I'd like to welcome each and every one of the audience members who are tuning in from all over the world. Great news for you folks. As of tonight, we are broadcasting on two new platforms. We've added that my personal LinkedIn page and also my Twitter page. So we'll be broadcasting over six platforms and this is worldwide. This is all thanks to you for your demand. You keep on asking for shows and we're giving them to you and all your suggestions that we, um, we've taken into account. And here we are, we're delivering. So once again, thank you so much. I would like to give a huge shout out to the producer of Rob's Inner Circle, Jenny Duhame. And I also would like to give a shout out to the podcast technician on our show, Patty Lady Starlight Saragossa. The Seriously Live broadcast team is at it again. Join us this upcoming Saturday, July 2nd, as yours truly, Esther Brzezinski, my co-host on a noon hour out of the box, and producer Jenny Duhame will be at the Scotty's Bar located at 3979 Tasha Row Boulevard, in St. Hubert, and that's on the south shore of Montreal, and that's where our Daily Struggles co-star, Art LeDuc, will be performing with his cover band, Rockhead. We will interview Art before the band's performance, and showtime is at 9.30, and while you're at it, why not drop by and enjoy a great meal? They have amazing prices. Be sure to watch Daily Struggles, the sitcom everyone is talking about on the Rise Up TV channel on the Roku streaming service. Download the Roku app on all of your smart devices or you can get the Roku stick on Amazon. Make sure you watch all our productions on the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. We want you to comment, give us a share. Click on that like button, subscribe to the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell because every time there's a new production coming out, you will be the first to know. Folks, it's that time once again. It's time to sit back, kick up your feet on the edge of the table, relax, and let us carry their load. Folks, it's showtime. It is time to bring on our guest who's standing by from... Of all places, this is a new place. We've never had anybody on our show from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She's a brilliant writer, a director, a producer, and an amazing lead actress. Ladies and gentlemen, please help him. Help me welcome tonight's star attraction on Rob's Inner Circle, Talita Maya. <laughs> Talita, I could just hear the millions of fans around the world giving you a standing ovation right now. Oh man, thank you for our. 
Well, Brandon woke up really early to be here. So thank you so much for your presence. Wow, this is fantastic. This is great. We have someone tuning in from Australia. That is wonderful. Any idea what time it might be in Australia right now? I believe, is it 13 hour difference with us? Is that it? Could it? I don't know. Anyways, last I heard it about 12, 13 hours. Anyways, good on you, Marilyn, for joining us. And good on you, everybody, for joining us. Talita, such a pleasure. You're an amazing actress. I saw some of your footage, and I was just totally blown away. Wow. You are so talented. Congratulations for everything that you do. So, Talita, originally you're from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, but right now you're living in Los Angeles, California. It could have been New York. It could have been Chicago, Minneapolis. No, you chose L.A. So why did you choose L.A.? Well, um, I went to L.A. to study. You know, I, I um, well, that was the excuse, actually, that I gave, right? Um, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to go do, you know, films and work in the cinema industry. My parents were against it. So I told my parents that I wanted to go study in US and um, and you know I after I finished UCLA the two years that I did extension I stayed I got hired and then it's been over 10 years now and do you miss Brazil by any chance yes that's why I'm here I I try to come uh, as much as I can and try to get work here um, you know like Right now, I'm, I've been working quite a bit here um, because I, I, it's my culture. I miss a lot. I miss my family like crazy. That's the hardest part. Uh, I miss my friends, you know, my childhood friends. Um, and I miss the, the warmth because Brazilians are so warm people and they're very welcoming. And I miss that a lot. <laughs> I know Canadians are too. But I miss that a lot. Right. Don't forget the Canadians. Yeah, we're blood with the Americans. We're the same thing. We're all cousins. We're brothers or sisters. It's like most of yeah. our families crossed over the border. And so we're just one big happy family. Actually, we're even family with Brazilians, Italians. We're all one. We're all <laughs> one breed. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of, yeah. Everybody sure, loves everybody. Brazil, Brazil is a melting pot. A lot of, a lot of people from all over the world. I don't know if you know that, but... There's the, the second biggest Japanese community all over the world. It's in You're Brazil. I'm in shock. I never knew that. I'm learning yeah. that right now. Outside of Japan, Brazil. It's a good thing I tuned into Rob's inner circle. Otherwise, I never would have known that. <laughs> and like Brazil and the south of Brazil, there's a lot of Italian communities, uh, German communities. The north has a lot of French. Uh, it's Brazil is a big melting pot. Wow, that's amazing. And that's <laughs> there you go. I see all the fans tuning in worldwide. I told you, uh, Talita, you, you're going to become a superstar this evening. You're already a star. <laughs> we have a friend in common by the name of Patricia Chica. How is it that you met Patricia Chica? And what is Patricia Chica doing for you right now? Patricia is taking care of the PR for my film. Uh, I met her through a friend, Robert. Um, when I finished my film, I didn't know what to do with it because with Tempest, my other film, I finished, I got into a big festival, LA Shorts, which is a Oscar qualifier, BAFTA qualifier, Canadian Films Award qualifier. But I, I, I didn't know how to, you know, um, use that to, you know, um, get my film in more festivals or, you know, get more people to watch my movie. So I decided with Terminally, I was gonna have someone to help me out with that because um, it's a lot of things for a filmmaker to do, you know, independent filmmaker to take care of and definitely like marketing and, and PR is, so I went to school for marketing, but I'm just, when it comes to marketing myself, that is, that's very hard. So I, I'd rather have someone else taking care of the PR. Well, already you wear many hats. You're a writer, you're a director, you're a producer. Yeah, that, that's a lot to take care of. And a lot, a lot of times marketing, it, 
it, it's a little too much. You also you're also an actress. You're a lead actress, so it's good they have someone else. And Patricia is the right person to have as a publicist. And by the way, folks, Patricia Chica was a guest here on Rob's Inner Circle. We invite you to go onto the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. Click onto the playlist called Rob's Inner Circle. And it's uh, one of our first shows. So you can go watch Patricia Chica and find out all about this amazing person. She's not only a publicist. She does a lot of things. She is someone who's prominent oh, in the film God. industry. Yeah. So you were a judo champion. Are you still practicing the art? No. It's been a long time. Um, I was a, a judo uh, practitioner when I was a practitioner. Is that the right word? Uh, when I was a, a child, um, teenager as well. But then I stopped. And there's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> because um, uh, I was fighting with a friend. We were playing. We were in judo practice. And, practice, and uh, I threw her. And she put her arms and it broke her arms. Oh. She, you know, there's a way when we are playing judo, there's a way to fall so you don't get hurt. And uh, she tried to stop the fall with her arms and then it, it got broken. And I just felt really bad. Uh, and uh, I, I was helping her to do homework for a month. And I just like, I don't want to hurt someone like that again. So I end up stopping do, like not doing judo anymore, which nowadays I, I just, it was, I, I wish I didn't because it's a really cool sport. But back then I just, it was very uh, shocking, you know, to see an arm broken like that and, and knowing that I caused that and I, it was just hard to, to take in back then. So I stopped, but I, I, I love judo. I love jujitsu. And you also know some jujitsu, and I have a hunch that you may be an MMA fan because being Brazilian, there's a lot of fighters that came out of Brazil, and the likes of Anderson Silva, Vitor Belfort, this Christian Cyborg, Charles Oliveira, and Amanda Nunez. So, are you an MMA fan? Yes, Amanda Nunez is my favorite fighter. Amanda Nunez is your favorite fighter. So, tell us how it is that you relate to Amanda Nunez. She's just like, she just has such a cool, um, like she's a, she respects everyone, you know, she's an amazing fighter. She has confidence, but she's not overconfident. And she just, she's a, like, she's a, she's a strong woman, you know, she, she just beat up every other fighter in her, her, her c category and, you know, with humility and, and always with a big smile and uh, always fighting for, you know, the female uh, MMA fighters to get better pay. So I just think she she's a really cool chick. <laughs> yeah. And she defeated some really big names in UFC and notably Holly Holm is one of them who defeated Ronda Rousey and uh, Amanda also defeated uh, Ronda Rousey and what goes on as the biggest and worst defeat of um, Ronda Rousey that she has ever faced. You had a very unfortunate ski accident and it changed your life. So can you tell us what happened and where it is that it happened? Yeah, um, I was uh, skiing in Nemeth, uh in California. And I was by myself. And one of my big fears is, well, there's no skiing in Brazil. So when we watch movies about snow in Brazil, we get scared to get stuck in a mountain because we see people getting throat frostbites and you know, like all the terrible things that doesn't happen in Brazil. So I had a lot of fear of, you know, getting stuck in the mountain. So I was trying to go a little faster than I should and I hit a mogul. And then when I hit the mogul, I lost control. I was trying to stop myself, and uh, and then I just heard the, and it was my knee. And then I tried to kept going down because, you know, again I was afraid of getting stuck in the mountain. 
Uh, and then I really messed up everything. But it was close to closing time, and you were beginning to panic at one point, thinking, oh, my God, you know, what if I stay stuck here? Yeah, and I was by myself, and I didn't know, you know, if I was in the right exit. Oh. Um, so I was just really, you know, trying to get out of there. And um, what well, was supposed to be just like uh, a rupture of my ligament, it ended up being worse than that. So, but, uh, I will never see you again. <laughs> never, never again. No. No, no, no. Well, I tried skiing myself. I tried the experience. And we have a place over here. It's very, very popular. I'm sure you never heard of it. But it, we have a place called Mont Tremblant over here. Mm -hmm. And I went skiing with the family at one point, And I didn't know. I was a bit of a uh, Toledo. I didn't know much about skiing. You know, I put on some skis. And I don't think I hit a mogul. But I really went downhill really fast. I had no control. And I smashed into a snowbank. I lost my skis, actually one of my skis. And I was like out of breath. And it was one of the worst experiences of my life. The goggles were stamped. It, you know the cartoons? Yeah. They were stamped in my face. One of the worst experiences ever. So that was it. I took off, I, I took off the other ski. I threw it down the hill. I go, that's it. I'm through. My career is over as a skier. So that was it for that. I, I had an accident with a, with a snowboard before in 2010. Uh, and uh, and I was like, okay, I'm not doing snowboard anymore. I'm just going <laughs> to ski. And now I'm definitely not doing either. <laughs> either one of those. I'm going to be staying in the jacuzzi, drinking hot chocolate and no sports wherever there is snow. Thank you. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe there's no mobile. That's it for me. So besides the snowboarding and skiing, you obviously have a, an athletic side to yourself. There's some judo, jujitsu in there. Which other sports do you like participating in? Soccer, perhaps? No. 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 I can't like anything that, you know, like any sports with balls. I'm just like, they, they go through me, you know, like I don't see it. I'm like, I tried to do tennis when I was um, young, when I was a child. It was terrible because it looked like I was playing ballet. I would try to hit it. I was like, ah. It's like <laughs> very. Well, actually, very you, have to, you have to hit a tennis ball a little bit faster than that, though. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Just, <laughs> it doesn't work for me, any of those sports. But um, but I, I like a little bit of adrenaline. I um, More when I was younger. But I did, um, I did skydiving. Oh, wow. Yeah, I never finished the entire course, but I did solo skydive. Um, I did, I was a swimmer for a while when I was a child, ballet for many, many years. Um, mostly like dancing, you know, like when it comes to sports, mostly dancing. Skydiving, I mean, that's like really out of the box. Uh, yeah. What is it that attracted you to skydiving? I mean, you, you want to put me on a plane with a parachute? It, 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 no, I'm not, I'm not going to jump. I can't do it. How, how do you manage to jump out of a plane? Like there's 12,000 feet right under you. You just jump out and trust this supposedly called parachute that is supposed to open. How, how, how do you do that? How, how do you get the courage to do that? Um, well... It's actually not, it's, it's safe. It's not, you know, it's safe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's safer than a lot of things. But um, I, I always wanted to fly, you know, so that would be the closest thing from flying. Um, well, now they have that other jump. I forgot the name, but like the suit, the thing that you put the suit and, you know, you open your arms. But that for me is crazy. Oh, it yeah. It requires a lot of control. But um, I, um. Do you want to hear a really funny story about skydiving? Go ahead. Okay. So uh, when I was doing my course, my first class for skydiving, it was when I moved to U.S. And I had I was a, like a new, you know, uh, Angelina. So there was a lot of English um, fear, right? I was scared of not knowing all the words and, you know, this is – a dangerous sport and uh, I took six hours of class and 
at the end of it, when I got in the plane, I was like, oh my God, what if I missed something that was like vital for this, you know? And I started getting a little bit, of, a little bit of scare, you know, and I sat down in the plane and I, I asked one of the instructors, it's like, Hey, what is the thing that I cannot miss? <laughs> and then he was like, Oh, you know, pull the, pull the, the, the parachute. And I was like, no, 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 seriously, because I was more scared. I knew that if I didn't, you know, if, if by any chance I got, you know, uh, crazy scared and I forgot to pull, they will pull for me. The problem is actually landing because once the parachute is open, you're on your own. So, and landing can be very dangerous. You can land in the wrong place. There's a lot, there's body of waters everywhere. There's oh. there cables, you know, street cables. So, and there are like ways of landing. Like if you fall, you can hurt, you can get really hurt. So, I there's like a way that you that you go down right you have to go through like more or less like this like zigzagging so I was scared that I that I you know was missing something very important about landing and then suddenly I just hear the two structures talking and they're speaking in Portuguese oh what <laughs> yes okay and I was, so the entire six hours of English class was with two Brazilian structures. <laughs> oh, and wow. I was just like, I can't believe this. I'm like, like, I'm super scared now. And we're like two seconds away from flying out of the plane. And <laughs> you guys are Brazilian. And uh, I was just like, okay, well, too late now. But, wow. but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, funny i was just like jesus i wish i had asked that question like an hour ago <laughs> well you know what that's a lesson learned from now on if ever uh, i'm gonna be with instructors and they're talking i'm gonna ask them by the way you don't speak italian do you just just in case you know so get it off get it out of the way right away so not the end you don't have to go through that experience that you went through <laughs> yep you're from where in italy well, my parents are from a central, or well, actually Rome, just under Rome, two hours under Rome. It's okay. it's a uh, more of a rural province. Now it's beginning to de develop. It's called Frosinone. And Patty, our tech, a podcast technician, a uh, funny story is that her mom and my mom, I mean, it's, what, 38 years I know Patty. Uh, we didn't grow up together, but, you know, we lost sight of each other at a certain point. But our two moms were playing together in Italy. They were play, they were friends. So we're from the same region. It's called Frosinone. It's just under Rome. It's two hours from uh, Rome Airport. Oh. So, yeah. And it's very similar to Portuguese because it's a Latin language. Yeah, so, I, I love Italy. That's why I asked. <laughs> Have I you been to Italy? Oh, yes. A few have, times. <laughs> have you shot any films in Italy? No, I wish. Well, I wish. It's coming. After tonight, it's going to come. Believe me, it's going to come. I actually just watched um, Gladiator oh, yesterday. Nice. Yeah. That's a great movie. Yes. So like, it was a long time that I haven't seen it. And I was like trying to find something on Netflix. And then I saw Gladiator. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it. Well, I actually watched The Devil's Advocate the other night on uh, Netflix myself, and that's an old that's a movie going back with Keanu Reeves, Charlize yeah. Theron, and Al Pacino, like you've never seen him before. Just a great movie, very very entertaining. Over two hours. If you're tired, you don't want to watch it. You're gonna fall asleep on it. But then again, how can you fall asleep on The Devil's Advocate? There's so yeah. much going on in there. You can, and it's it's kind of scary too. It has some some. It does have some, scary. some demons. It's pretty pretty. E. <laughs> so let's get into your acting career over here um, tell us how did you end up getting into acting i how did i end up getting into acting like i i i've wanted to be an actor since i know myself as a person um i when i was a child <laughs> when i was a child there was a group of theater in the school and I couldn't be a part of it because it was too young. So I decided to just try it out 
and I just like walked in, literally walked in in one of the plays and, you know, found myself a place and, you know, sat there and I'm like, oh, I want to be part of the, the, the crew. And, um, and I ended up getting a role. I was the mascotty in the, in the theater group. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, probably got a few people upset <laughs> because of that, but I've, I've always been um, passionate about theater, you know, and, and the arts itself, like, all the arts, painting, music. I played music when I was a child too. So I, I just love the arts. And that's not the only time you uh, you did that. You did something else. Uh, as we were talking um, a while back, uh, we had our initial conversation. Yeah. You told me that something special other uh, happened. Your bigger sister was modeling and you did something special. So what is it that you did that caught the attention of the onlookers at the event? Yeah, so my my sister was like a queen in her school, and uh, she had to do the catwalk. Um, and I was I was very young at the time, uh, probably like three years old. Like I was, it was before I could go to school. And I I saw my sister, and then I just went on <laughs> went along. I just went up the stage, and I started on the catwalk, walking in the catwalk with her. And I was doing my own show and the owner of the, the school, because it was a private school, she was just like, who is this girl? And at the end of the, the end of the parade, she went to talk to my mom. And she was like, your daughter has to study here. Like, and my, my mom was like, she's too young. And she was like, that's fine. Just we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. And, um, Yes, let's talk about the latest latest we're project. Gonna, yes, okay. we're, we're getting into that. Marilyn, uh, go ahead, um, uh, Talita. Uh, finish yeah. off with that. We're gonna we're gonna get into the latest film project, uh, Marilyn. Uh, we're getting right there. Yeah, so it's, it's just basically that. So I just started, you know, studying um, a little ahead of my time in school because of that. Okay, so let's get into your latest film project. Uh, to fill your request from uh, Marilyn Sch Schneider from uh, Australia. Talk to us about the latest film that you shot. It's a short film, and you cast Evan Williams, who's best known for his roles. He's a Canadian actor from Calgary, and he's uh, well-known here in Canada, actually worldwide. He played in Degrassi, The Next Generation. He played in Being Erica. He also starred in a movie opposite uh, Drew Barrymore, so tell us all about the movie that you shot with Evan and uh, where you're going with the movie these days. Yeah, so uh, the movie was just finished. Uh, we are in the process of submitting to festivals. So um, we don't know which one it's going to take us. Um, I hope all of them. <laughs> um, I'm not submitting to a lot, so I hope at least a few. And... Um, it's about codependency and it's a 16 minutes short and what else do you guys want to know okay uh, tell us what it is that inspired you to make this powerful movie that you did with Evan because I saw the movie and I was just totally blown away you two were wow you, what a performance by you both very very nice my prediction and I'm usually not wrong you're gonna do very well with this movie you're getting many awards for this movie thank you so what is that inspired you uh what inspired me to do the film uh well i think like hollywood really glamorizes like the whole alcohol addiction drugs and rock and roll you know all that thing but um and the movie is not really about addiction addiction is it's it's a second theme in the film but it's more about codependency and i uh i wanted to show the perspective of someone that is on the receiving end of an addiction behavior uh addictive behavior and um i uh, um that's just one way of showing codependency codependency it's it's i think it's such a uh Next, like it's a, it's, a, it's a subject that should be more explored because uh, it's very common and a lot of people don't really understand what it means. 
a lot of people think that codependency is being very dependent on people and that is not really what it is. Codependency is putting someone else in front of yourself all the time and, and forgetting about your own needs to take care of someone else. So uh, I think that's very, very strong in women, you know, because we're, we're, we're educated to be nurturing all the time. And we, a lot of the times we forgot it, we forget about it, ourselves. And I, I've seen this a lot with super strong women and, you know, uh, where they were doing for others all the time and, and not, not doing enough for themselves. And um, that's what inspires me. I'm, I'm definitely a codependent person. <laughs> so I, I wanted to talk about, you know, the, that subject because, um, I haven't seen anything that talks about it in a very direct way. So, Marilyn Schneider had a question, Patty. Uh, we'll, we'll let the um, uh, this comment here by Jenny uh, stay on for a little while, so the audience can read it afterwards. Pat, as, you, as soon as you have a chance, can you bring back the question from uh, Marilyn Schneider from Australia? Yeah. Let she me just comment on on that comment from Jenny. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. It's passed down by generation to another. And, and again, going back to uh, women, right? Because we learn, um, and I see that a lot. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it's like, especially in Latin America, not at all, but I grew up here. And I saw that a lot from, you know, my mother, my grandmother, you know, women that are very strong, but they would always put others in front of them, you know, their kids husband you know parents you know and they would completely forget about themselves so and of course that's a learning behavior you know as a as a woman so um yeah that's that's one of the the reasons that i wanted to talk about codependency patty can you put up the question again please there you go marilyn so she goes your first film had evan williams as your lead male and again in this film so what qualifies what qualities actually what qualities does he bring that draws you to him to play your lead male? So Evan, it's it's a great friend. Um, I've known him for a very long time. Um, he's like an amazing person, uh, very kind soul, very supportive of my career. I'm very grateful uh, for his friendship, and uh, he's a hell of an actor. So. <laughs> That's it made my life, it makes my life so much easier to work with someone that knows me very well, knows how I think. Um, you know, so it's easy for me to speak to him as a director. You know, it's we have our our conversations, they flow. So it's it's very easy for me to direct him. And he, he's also very easy to be directed. So like you tell him one thing, he like immediately, you know, he goes there. You know, some some actors sometimes you know, they can't get out of their their zone of, of like, oh, this is how I see the character. And Evan, um, you know, he's very easy to understand. Of course, like he wants to understand why you ask him certain things, but it it's it's a very easy communication and he's very easy to direct. So and besides like charismatic guy, you know, a star. <laughs> so from the very moment you had that idea of terminally unique to the moment that you said that's it the film is finished how did that how long did that process take oh man uh well as an indie filmmaker <laughs> <laughs> things take a long time because there's no money um but I, I wrote the film a year before production because I was trying to get grants. So I uh, I just applied mm -hmm. for several grants, changed the script a bunch of times too. Um, but you know, it's it's hard to get grants. Um, and at one point, exactly the day that, that you know I decided to make the movie, because I almost didn't do it because I didn't have the money and I didn't get to any of the grants and my cinematographer had moved to 
North Carolina. So I was like, Hi, there's no way I'm going to do this because how am I going to fly met my cinematographer here with all the equipment that will be really expensive. And I can't fly to North Carolina and fly everyone from LA to North Carolina. That would be really hard as well. So I, I almost gave up on doing the film. And then one day I was doing a um, lens test for a director that directed me in a project. And he was like, Lita, um, I would love to repay the favor because I was, I was just helping him out. He's like, if you ever need a DP, because that's mainly what he does, he's a DP, uh, just ask me, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm happy to help you with whatever you need as a DP. And I'm like, okay, I have a script. <laughs> 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 don't offer i have something and then uh this was like i think october and then december we were shooting so it was very fast like the process was just like and the guy that i was doing the rehearsal i was like he was an actor and i was like hey do you want to be in the film so it was like very fast i was like let's do it let's do it and then you know i started moving and you no know, calling all my all my friends you know um and it just moved really quickly that's just amazing and the film was shot in 6k so for those of you who are shooting is still shooting in high uh high definition hd you're a world away we're up to 6k it's not even 4k anymore and uh, some films are shot in 8k right now these days uh, if i'm not yeah. mistaken yeah. wow but, come a long way yeah but the like in the end, you, you usually have a 2K version. Um, and you can do a 4K version too, but a lot of the theaters don't play 4K. So so I end up with a 2K. Which is, which is very oh. good in itself. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So earlier on in your life, you performed at retirement homes, orphanages, schools, and also plays. Actually, all the plays at the church you were attending as a child. How enriching have these experiences been for you in your life? Very. Um, I, uh, it's, it's very good when we do things, you know, that are bringing people happiness, right? And uh, a lot of the times when you go to orphanages and retiring homes, um, those people are, you know, sometimes very lonely, especially uh, retiring homes. Um, in Brazil, so it, it's it's just like they, they feel very grateful that you're there giving them attention. You're a stranger, you know, so um, they feel special. And it's when you when you know that you that you helping someone to feel that way is very gratifying. So that's definitely one of the things that help like that impulse me to be an entertainer. You know, is knowing that whatever happiness, you know, like, or if, if I make someone feel like, oh, I see myself like that, that's, that's me, you know, like, I, I can really, really relate to this, this character. Uh, that's very gratifying. That so makes it worth As a voiceover and a dubbing actor, you you have over 12 credits as a lead voice for cartoon documentaries and series for networks like Netflix, Paramount Plus, Fox, and Global. Talk to us about some of those projects. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, from cartoons to shows to um, narration. Um, it's it's a very fun job because you're it's all your voice. So you like this doesn't matter. Right. So finding that voice for that character, a lot of the times dubbing, um, I think dubbing, it's so freaking hard. People don't understand that because you have to match the, the mouth of the actor to the words that are coming out. Um, and it's really, really hard. There are two different things, right? Voiceover and dubbing, but they are equally uh, challenging and very fun to do. Very, very fun. I got inspired by an amazing American actor by the name of, you probably never heard of him, Robin Williams. You never heard of him. <laughs> of 
<laughs> anyway, uh, he he played his role in the Mrs. Doubtfire, and he was a voiceover artist in there. And I can remember him when he was doing some of the projects there. I was watching him, and he was, even though, he's, you know, the camera is not on you. They don't see you. He was actually making the motions. Oh, yeah. And I go, wow, that sounds like a lot of fun because even though they don't see you and afterwards when you hear the voice of the, the genie uh, and the Disney production, the cartoon, you're hearing Robin Williams' voice. I go, oh, I can imagine what he's doing. So there's a lot more that voiceover just, just in, uh, you know, more than just pro uh, projecting your voice. You actually have to become that character in the flesh to be able to project your voice even though we don't see you we can actually see you without not seeing you so yeah. is, is this something that you do as well oh yeah like when we are doing the voice work we are always standing and doing the action as you know the character is doing because that has to be real you can't just like be like hey yeah whatever you know what I mean? like it's it's the body Will, will bring the life to it, right? It's not just the voice. So there's a lot of movement. You're like in a big room, just, you know, moving. Yeah. There's a lot of exercises you gotta do too. Like usually I do about an hour of a free workout for my voice before I record. Tell me if I'm weird, um, Talita. I stop in front of the mirror and I just start taking any character at all, just throwing any crazy voice, making funny faces in the mirror, just that random like that. Is that a normal behavior or is that something that a lot of actors do at random? Uh, <laughs> let me think. I, I've done a lot of that. Uh, more save me, past. save me. <laughs> I, you know, it's, I have a lot of fun, um, trying accents i have a teacher that uh i always go like i always have like a like a one-on-one -on -one class with her before i do any accent class and i uh, not accent class accent um audition and i always have a lot of fun because it it's so different from what i'm used to and sometimes i i hear a different tone in my voice that i never heard before just because i'm using different parts of my of my mouth to speak right so like either the mouth is more closed or the jaws are tight or they're like more open and the sound is different so it's it's very it's like a it's a way of getting to know a different side of yourself which is interesting it's meditative yeah. Very interesting, as a matter of fact. And if I have a chance one day, I would love to do some voiceover myself because, you know, it's people like yourself and Robin Williams and all these other amazing um, people out there who do voiceover uh, work. And Esther Brzezinski, a friend of mine, she's my co-host at Noon Hour of the Box, is also a voice actor. And she's an inspiration, by the way. And I know Esther is watching. Thanks for tuning in, Esther. Yes, you're an inspiration. I said it here. <laughs> So you've worked on TV shows like Community, Why Kill Women, iCarly Revival, as well as the independent pilot Blow Me, alongside Tony Shalhoub and Jeremy Sisto, where you played the female lead. Talk to us about these experiences. Wow. Uh, uh, so Blow Me uh, was the first work I've, I've ever done in, in America. Like that happened, like, a little bit after um, I got there, because I'm not there right now. But um, as soon as I got my work visa, I I shot that pilot, and it was a lot of fun. I was the only female actress on set, so <laughs> it was uh, it, it was interesting, right? And a lot of testosterone, but um, but also. Uh, kind of like empowering because I was working with big names like Tony, you know, big actor, uh, Matthew Lillard, amazing. Uh, Jeremy Sisto, um, one of the funniest guys I've ever seen working on a set. Uh, just like everything that he would say would make you laugh. And um, 
for log, I, I, I forgot how to say his name like correctly, but uh, he's a German actor, phenomenal. Um, it, it was just like really inspiring. And um, unfortunately the show didn't get picked up, but it was really funny. And um, I Carly, you know, same, like so inspiring working, like being on set for four days with, the cast uh, and seeing them, you know, um, just work so well together because they, they've been together for so long in the show. And uh, I would always laugh and they like, they would give like different <laughs> deliveries every time. And it was really funny, really funny, like really funny to, you know, like, like really funny, really funny. Um, elements to it you know it was was a fun thing to be a part of um community too I, I got to be you know a part of one of my favorite films gremlins you know one of my favorite films as a child uh, so it was like i was in the segment for the gremlins um oh. remake on community because <laughs> it was a remake of a portuguese gremlins so that was really fun so like, yeah all of these experiences have been Crazy fun for me. So let's go back to Terminally Unique, the film that you shot with Evan that you directed, you produced, and you also are the lead actress uh, opposite Evan Williams. In this movie, there's so much manipulation, so much said without words too. So to portray these types of roles as an actor, it can be quite trying. It can be quite difficult. How is it that you have to go into that mindset to actually be able to portray a character convincingly. You mean the manipulation coming from from Evan, right? Exactly. Um, yes. Yeah, I remember one of the things um, that were interesting, like when we were rehearsing, uh, Evan and I. Uh, I remember telling Evan, like Evan. You gotta press like press me on the on the on the on the wall, like punch the wall. And he was like, he had a hard time, you know, um understanding that. Like because it's his nature is very kind, it's very he's a very sweet guy. Um and and then like we had a sit down and we talked about it and we talked about the behavior of some and, and again like let me be clear here. Addiction is a disease. So uh, a lot of the times these people, like they, they are so caught up in that disease that they don't like, they tell the lies to themselves, right? That, you know, that what they're doing, it's okay. So they find excuses for their behavior all of the time. And that's why they manipulate. And a lot of the times, I mean, like they, they learn the manipulation works and they keep doing it, you know, not seeing how that is hurting the person next to them. And it's because they don't have the strength or maybe they don't want to get rid of, you know, that, that, that problem, right? Um, or that disease, they don't, they don't want to, you know, have to, to do the, the work or they don't think they need to do the work. So um, I, uh, it's not a criticism against addicts because I think we like they need help, but um, it's when you're in the receiving end, a lot of the times it's easy to get manipulated because if you love the person, you try to always believe that you know what they're telling is the truth, right? So we like I remember I had to have a conversation with Evan for for a while about what was you know the the, the process of of like how how was the the thought process for for Eric and uh, and then you know he slapped on it and then when we came to shoot he just deliberately delivered brilliantly. Um, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was probably hard, you know. 
So when someone has watched your film, Terminally Unique, the message you would like for the audience to walk away with, what is that message that you want the audience to have learned from your film? Um, That it's okay to do what's right for you. You know, that uh, a lot of the times we want to take care of people, but we got to take care of ourselves. To take care of people, we got to take care of ourselves first. Uh, because otherwise, it, it all becomes a, a big melting pot, right? Um, and it's, it's, it's painful, right? So that's, that's the message. Like, I, I, I want women to feel that they have power. That you know, I, I want, even though that doesn't show in the film. Like my my whole point is to have like a cathartic, you know, view of the film, and be like, oh my god, I've been in that relationship, or I am in that relationship, and not necessarily the person is an addict, but you know, it's just someone that is toxic for that person, and it's really hard to get out of that cycle, that toxic cycle, because there's love, there's comfort there's you know there's you know you know that feeling for so long and you you get used to it um and and drama gets addicting it becomes addicting too right when you're in a drama for a very long time that becomes an addiction so uh it's i want people to see you know that that kind of cycle and be like oh my god that i'm in there I'm like right now that's where I'm in in my life or I've been there and you know like and I'm glad I'm out or I can get out there's a way to get out you know and that sometimes the best um the best help we can give to an addict is actually s- staying outside and letting them you know do the work themselves interesting it- Try, you know, if you already try, because no one's gonna like an addict's not gonna become better if he doesn't want. He needs to want in the first place. He's you can't make someone do it for you. He needs to do it for himself, right? So, and it's a very easy. It's a learning behavior as well, like like codependency, right? A lot of a lot of addicts they they have that running in their families. You know, and they, they, it's a learning behavior as well. So, you know, sometimes the best help is actually letting them, you know, work on their own. We have a question from our audience member, uh, Esther. Okay. She's saying, why do a film on this subject? Codependency? Yes. So- so like I, I answered uh, earlier, uh, because I don't think it's a, it's, a, it's a subject that is very explored. I think there's a lot of misinterpretation about codependency. Um, and I wanted to talk about that. I think especially women are very codependent because it's a learning behavior from since we were, you know, kids to, to be very nurturing and, 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 and very um, altruistic. Um, and we forget about ourselves a lot and we excuse behaviors that are not okay uh, very often. And um, acceptance that one has an addiction, yes, for sure. Yeah. Are there, are talking- ways, there are ways of helping without having to be dragged down, right? Wait a second, guys. I need to put the charger because I just saw my computer's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> You're tuned in to Rob's Inner Circle. Folks, our guest this evening is Talita Maya. She's a brilliant actress, writer, producer, director. Coming to you live from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's her homeland, but right now she resides in Los Angeles, California. And here she is. She's back. Talita, I wanted to ask you, are you planning on shooting a film in Brazil anytime in the future? Oh, I want to. I have a I have a treatment. I wrote a treatment for a psychological thriller. Um, I 
really want to. I just need to find, you know, investors, you know, and then once that's done, I'm sure we are going to shoot because it will be really fun. I, I would love to shoot something in Brazil that I'm directing. Speaking of which, the film industry in Brazil has been heavily dependent on state funding. Now, if you could help the industry grow in your native country, what is it that you would do? What, what's the, your part that you would do to help the film industry grow in Brazil? Um. In, in other words, if you could do something to help the industry f thrive, and if you had the means and the resources to do it, what is it that you would bring to the film industry in Brazil? Um, oh, that's a tough question. A tough incentives. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's, the grants are associated with, uh, with, you have to, so it's a little complicated to explain how it works in Brazil, but basically, you have to get like uh, either private funding or you you have to apply on Ancini, which is a regular, uh, I don't know how to explain that, but you have to apply on Ancini, Ancini has to approve for you, then you have to go find money for your, your film um, through, you know, sponsors. But I, I feel like if Brazil had, um, you know, something like U.S. has, uh, of just, you know, being able to provide more money for in interna international um, uh, productions, I think it would really help Brazil. And also learn how, how the industry works outside of Brazil, because Brazil has their own way of doing things uh, and is a little bit different from, from at least U.S., if you can leave a message behind through your film, the message that you want to leave to the audience this evening who haven't seen the film yet, but a message related to your film that you want to leave to the audience, what you're talking about in the film, what you're portraying, what is it that you would want to say to our audience this evening? For this film specifically? Terminally? Yeah. Terminally ill, yes. Unique, not ill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really unique. Yes, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, um, that that it's 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 okay of taking care taking care of yourself. It's okay to 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 make the right choice uh, for yourself, you know, and um, that nothing is it's terminally unique. Terminal unique is a, it's a it's an expression for actually AA, and where you know you think that your situation is unique, and it's you know I think it's very common to be in a toxic cycle, you know, and and sometimes it feels that it's impossible to get out of it, but it you know there's always a way. And uh, there's always a, a, a path of healing. And it's okay to take that path. So when and where can the general public be able to watch Terminally Unique? That's going to depend on the festivals. <laughs> so so let's, let's, let's pray that it gets into a lot of festivals. So we are in a lot of, um, a lot of premieres. Not a lot of premieres because it will be the only one, but a lot of screenings. Talita, you got the closing word on the show. Uh, time is up. Unfortunately, man, this really went by so fast. So entertaining. Thank you so much for being a part of our show this evening, uh, Talita. Uh, I, I know I had a lot of fun. And judging by the audience's reaction, uh, it, it was a really great show. Terrific. Your closing words, the words of inspiration that you could leave behind to the audience this evening about life in general, of those who want to pursue their goals but are afraid to do it, are insecure, are not too sure what to do it, how to do it. How is it that they should go about pursuing their goals? Pursuing their dreams. 
man, believe in yourself, have a good support system. I think support system is incredibly important. But beyond that is have always, you know, the belief that you can do it, you know, and, and stay positive and, and, and stay uh, grounded as well, um, you know, and, and love above all for everyone around you, you know, respect for everyone around you and for yourself as well. Talita, I have a personal invitation to extend to you. I'm asking you to please stay with us. We're going to be signing off the show right now. But we're going to have our meet and greet with the producer and our techie. This is behind the stage. So can we count on you to stick around? Yeah. Thank you so much, Talita. Such a pleasure. Thank you for being on our show. Such an honor. On behalf of myself, Patty, Jenny, and the entire worldwide audience, we wish you the best of luck with Terminally Unique and all of your film endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stick around. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Marilyn, for being part of the audience. And thank you to everybody for thank being you. part of our show this evening. It was absolutely fantastic. It was a great show. Very, very entertaining. We have a couple of announcements uh, right now coming up. Uh, and we're asking you to join us. So that is yours truly and Esther Brzezinski this upcoming Wednesday at noon on the Noon Hour Out of the Box show. This week, the topic is going to be work-life balance. We have another great show lined up. You can watch this show here both on the Bobby Short Shorts and Esther's Breeze YouTube channels as well as on my personal Facebook page. A reminder that a noon hour out of the box is a rebroadcast every Saturday between noon and 3 p.m. We have the, exter the extended version on accessradio.ca. That's A-X-I-S radio.ca. Tune in for some fun every Saturday between noon and 3. Next Friday, uh, that is uh, July 8th, and in recognition of those living with substance, including the opioid crisis and alcohol abuse, the mighty one with frontman Tim Steinruck, who you met on episode 72 of Rob's Inner Circle, is launching his video titled So High. We'll be signing off with the Mighty Ones trailer. So hit their page subscription bell to be informed when they launch. You don't want to miss this. Our producer, Jenny Duhame, had a sneak peek this week and said it was just an amazing and life-changing experience. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be signing off with the trailer to Tim Steinrich and the Mighty Ones uh, uh, song coming out uh, July 8th. And uh, next week, we're going to be having... Uh, we're going to be having another great star. It's going to be singer-songwriter Tasha Tillman. She'll be coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. To all of you, from all of us, we also wish you a very happy Canada Day this upcoming Friday. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. God bless. What did you just say? Uh...